Hello, everybody. This is Steven Zirk, and this is the second Pawn End Game lecture in my series on Pawn End Games. In the first lecture, we covered some basics of king and pawn against king, and you should understand that very well by now. In this lecture, we'll be covering some more complicated examples, more pawns, different structures, and how they interact. The first example I'll be covering is pretty basic. It's connected past pawns. Connect past pawns are basically when white has two past pawns and they're on adjacent files. So you might imagine having two of them is better than having one, and in fact you're always winning, unless black can immediately capture one of the pawns. This is because when you have these two past pawns, you can set up this structure, pawn in the back protecting a pawn in the front, and you can do this anywhere, say here, or here, it doesn't matter where. The basic point of, of having the two pawns set up this way is that black can never capture them. Even if we say your king is all the way in the corner, once you start advancing, this pawn is protected, so it can't be taken, and should black decide to take the back pawn, then this one advances, the king cannot get in the square, and it will promote. So basically this means that the black king is permanently tied down to these two pawns and you've got as long as you want for your king. The advantage of this is, if say black has his own passed pawn, his, not only is his king unable to help because it's tied down to your pawns, you've got all the time in the world to go take the pawn. Now, unlike with one pawn, there's no exception for the rook pawn. If you have two pass pawns on the G and H, you're still winning. But there is one specific position that I'd like to bring up. If you have pawns on G6 and H7, or on B6 and A7, the win is slightly trickier, although it's still there. Basically, usually if we were in the middle, white would play king F7, and black would have to move his king out to the right of the H file. However, there is no file to the right of the H, so white has to be slightly more careful here. And once his king is to the back, in general, I would advise just being careful a few seconds every move to make sure you're not stalemating him because it's a great shame to do that when you know exactly how to win. So what you do here is you move the king. When he moves to g7, as he has to, you actually sacrifice the front pawn, the H pawn, by promotion. He has to take, and you play king f6. Now, we know from the first lecture that this is a win, but just to show you, yeah, he has to play king g8, g7, king h7, king up, and now you're promoting. We hope you enjoyed this video demo from chess.com. Subscribe today to finish this video and get unlimited access to our full video library. Your membership also includes access to Chess Mentor, the most advanced interactive training tool available anywhere. You'll also get full access to the Opening Explorer, Tactics Trainer, and much, much more. So sign up today and get serious about improving your game.